Now, a news reports that uh, the Minister of Public Enterprises has rejected the name put forward by the ESCOM board to replace Andre de Reiter as CEO uh, once again raises the complex governance issues relating to the appointment of senior management at state-owned enterprises. Now, that's according to Professor Pami Natteson, uh, the CEO of the Institute of Directors in South Africa. Uh, please do note that we did reach out to the Department of Public Enterprises and uh, we still are waiting a response from them. In the meantime, though, Professor Natteson uh, says that the minister's rejection of the board's nomination lays bare the governance tangle that continues to affect governance balance at SOEs. Professor Natteson now joins us virtually to discuss this matter further. Professor, thanks for your time. Welcome to Morning Live. Uh, good morning. Thank you, Sakina, for having me. So as you say, you know, it lays bare again uh, some of the complexities around um, management and governance, especially at our state-owned enterprises. But what would you say, Professor Natterson, is the best governance practice when it comes to the appointment of uh, a CEO at a utility such as ESCOM? Yeah, so I think firstly, let me just say that I think the minister is well within his rights to reject the um, candidate that was put forward and citing the reason being that the memorandum of incorporation of the entity requires three names to be put forward to the minister for appointment. I think the issue here is that these MOIs, the way they are drafted and also oftentimes the legislation um, backing these SOEs, gives the minister the power to appoint not only the board of directors, but also to appoint the CEO which we believe is problematic. So in generally in a governance structure, you have shareholders who appoint a board of directors. That board of directors has a legal duty um, and potential legal liability when things go wrong, and they oversee an entity and, and ensure that the entity survives and thrives. What they then need to do is be able to have the power to appoint management to run the operations of the entity and, and management being headed up by the chief executive officer. So it's very important that we stick to the clarity of, of the roles here. Shareholders appoint boards, boards appoint CEOs. I think the challenge we have in the public sector and many of our SOEs is the minister, who is effectively the shareholder of the SOEs representing government, appoints not only the board, but also appoints the CEOs. And this can lead to various challenges. I mean, imagine being a board of directors, you're sitting there, you have this legal duty um, to ensure that this organization is successful, but you can't even choose who your CEO is. Um, it's almost chosen for you and you have to work with this person. And oftentimes when things go wrong, um, public will say, well, the board needs to be removed. But really, if the board's going to have this responsibility, then it should be paired with the right to choose who's going to lead the organization. Mm. Uh, Professor Natterson, you said the minister was well within his rights, uh, you know, to basically reject that name. Uh, he needed to have three names put forward to him. We know the problems that have beset Eskom as uh, our power utility. Uh, we know that many people would see this appointment as, you know, someone literally taking on a poison chalice. So with that said, if it is difficult for the board to actually come up with three names, what then? Yeah, that's a very difficult question because I said, as I mentioned previously, there's flaws, I believe, in the underlying um, legislation and, and governance uh, around these SOEs. I think the minister expects the board to um, find the candidates, suitable candidates to, to put forward to him. I would guess from a board's perspective, they've been through um, a, quite a stringent process in terms of putting an ad out, um, interview, psychometric testing, whatever else goes along with recruitment. Um, and I would guess by the fact that they put forward one name, they have faith in this one individual that, that they believe this individual is right to take the organization forward. Um, I think where we sit now is this tussle between a minister applying the, the MOI legislation and insisting on three names. And I think we'll have to see where it, where it goes from here in terms of whether the board now submits um, more names for the minister to consider. Mm. And uh, with that said, uh, again, you know, um, we've spoken about uh, public uh, or rather political interference at uh, these public entities and how this has bedeviled many of our SOEs. And of course, uh, naturally, some people would have then raised this in the context of what has happened, uh, regardless of the minister saying, well, he feels that the law stipulates three names, he received one, and therefore 
uh, uh, but, uh, sent it back to the board. But in terms of that political interference, uh, if you take a situation now uh, where perhaps another name is put forward, you have a CEO who comes in who perhaps may not have the confidence of the board and uh, that person gets appointed, how does that then again influence the dynamic and governance at the entity? Look, I think it's very problematic if um, individuals are appointed as CEOs and they don't necessarily have the trust and support of the board. I think it's a, it's a recipe for disaster. I think where we are right now in the political climate is there's a, a lack of trust in, firstly, these SOEs and their ability to deliver. And secondly, there's a lack of trust in government. Um, and oftentimes, we see, and even through, for example, findings of the Zondo Commission, we, we saw that there definitely was political influence in some of the appointments, not only of CEOs, but also of board members to these SOEs, which is extremely problematic. If we want to succeed as a country and we want our SOEs to succeed, we're going to need to have to start um, appointing people with the necessary knowledge, skills, experience, track record and moral compass to serve these entities properly. So uh, just to round this off, uh, Professor Natterson, so as I um, uh, previously tried to, you know, perhaps speculate what the board's uh, problem may have been in terms of finding three names, if they still cannot come up with three names, what should happen then? Um, time will tell. Um, I think, you know, the minister is probably going to stick to what the MOI requires and insist on, on three names being put forward. I think the board will probably um, need to look a bit further and, and put forward those three names. Um, having said that, as I said earlier, the whole arrangement is not ideal from a governance perspective. The board really should be able to appoint the individual that they believe is best to take this organization forward. We'll leave it there. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Natterson, uh, speaking to us there about uh, the current situation at Eskom and, of course, the governance uh, issue around that. Professor Palmi Natterson, CEO of the Institute of Directors in South Africa.